Okay, hello everybody, um, and welcome uh, to the two uh, the two forty five session of the Empowering Teaching Excellence um, Virtual Conference. So, uh, the title for this one is Partnerships for Intentional Teaching. This is part of the Foundations for College Teaching track, and our presenter today is Carl Hoops. He's an equine extension specialist and associate professor um, here at the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences. And uh, he came, received his doctorate of veterinary medicine in 2003 from CSU, Colorado State, came to Cache Valley and worked uh, starting in 2003 for the Vet Med Services in Richmond, Utah, and became an owner and partner for Valley Vet, uh, Valley Veterinary Services, I should read slower, <laughs> became an owner and partner and, and practiced for 13 years there and then began work at Utah State in August of 2015 as an extension, as an equine extension specialist, and has been teaching in the ADVS department as well as uh, extension across the state of Utah. So without further ado, I'll uh, turn the rest of the time over to Carl. Well, thank you. And I'm gonna share my screen here and pull up my, my PowerPoint. Um, I wanted to preface a little bit today just by saying, hey, I'm a veterinarian. Uh, I was trained really good in preg checking horses and cows. I was not trained really well in teaching. And a few of the pointers that I wanna share today really talk about my, my uh, journey as a teacher, how I've approached the process, but also how I, uh, some things that I, I really felt have helped me along the way. So to begin with, with intentional teaching, we have to have a purpose. Um, we have to have direction. We have to know where we're going um, as we begin that class. We need to know what we want the students to be able to learn. We want to know what we want them to be able to do by the end of that class. We have learning objectives. We have, uh, we ha we've set up these goals and we know where we want to go with them. We wanna be able to share that knowledge with those students, but we want those students to then take that knowledge and turn it into wisdom or applied knowledge. We want them to be able to learn and do things. If they just learn it and are not able to do it, then we haven't accomplished our goal. And in order to do that, our teaching has to evolve. One thing they told me in veterinary school, if we left veterinary school and we didn't learn anything else, and didn't apply and update our knowledge and, uh, and our practices, then after seven years, everything we were doing would be completely obsolete. We would have, we wouldn't be practicing good medicine anymore. With our teaching, we have to understand that's a lot more, it's a lot faster, bigger turnaround time. If we're not updating and evolving on a yearly basis, if not a semester basis, then we're archaic and we, we are not accomplishing what we need to do. So in order to do this, we need to form some partnerships. Uh, at least I had to form a lot of partnerships so that I could become an effective teacher so that my students were able to learn and that I was able to teach them in a way that was important. I have that knowledge. I had that expertise when I came to USU. Um, I knew what I was trying to get across to them, but that process of getting across to them took a little bit of time and effort. Now, just because we have that subject expertise doesn't mean we are expert teachers. We have a, I had a long ways to come. I had a long ways to go. And as such, I had to be able to, to change and to evolve and to get some, some help. And so I created a team that would help me to deliver that knowledge and to work in the best way possible. It allowed me to focus on my job and allowed others to do what they were paid for and what they're, what they're good at, in fact. So let's talk about a few of these partnerships. First of all, we had to have to create a partnership with our students. We create partnerships with other colleagues, and then we create partnerships with campus resources. And we'll talk a little bit about the first two, but I want to focus primarily, primarily about the campus resources and the partnerships that I had formed at that on, on different levels there. So first of all, when we, we form partnerships with students, we, we do that in a variety of ways. 
we we have our syllabus and i'll show you my syllabus here in just a minute for one of my courses but that's our agreement with them that's telling them what we expect of them we're giving them our learning objectives we're giving them our assignments um, we're telling them right up front what we expect of them and that syllabus is extremely important and it's something that has to be updated um, on, a, on a semester or a per class basis, because we as professors need to be changing um, on that level as well. Our Canvas page needs to be present. A year and a half ago when all of us had to go online uh, because of COVID, my son was taking some classes um, in, the, in, in some of the different classes of the university. And it was really hard for those professors because they didn't have a Canvas page. They had to create a whole new one. And for, for others, and I was in that, I had an active Canvas page and it was much easier at that time for the transition, but I keep changing on a regular basis. And that Canvas page needs to be alive, meaning you have to be using it. You have to be updating it. I do think you need a personal connection with those students. I teach one class that's anatomy and physiology, and there are over a hundred students in that class. So it's really difficult sometimes to get a personal connection with each one of them. One thing that I do is after the first exam of the semester, I, I challenge them to go in, look at all the questions they got wrong, to evaluate it, and then set an appointment up with me where they come in and talk about those, those things. Um, and it, it's either Zoom or in person, depending on what's available at the time. But what it did, it allowed them and gave them incentive to come and talk to me. And I was able to then give them uh, five points on that exam, gave them incentive to come in. But the connection that I was able to form with those students, as well as talk to them about some study habits, it really, really paid off. And then the last thing there is we've got to challenge them. We've got to be able to give them information and we've got to be able to encourage them to, to, to work hard, um, to further their knowledge, and not just make it a basic class. Okay, the next one is partnership, partnership with colleagues. Up here, I have our equine user group, a few members of our equine user group. These are individuals that have really helped me on my path um, as I've journeyed to become a, a better teacher. Kelly Munns is one of them there, and she was actually hired two years after I came into USU. She was a, a newer teacher, um, but she had some really good training. Her position is lecture, so she teaches our writing classes out here at, at the Equine Center, um, basic writing. And so anyway, she had really good training in teaching techniques, and she really helped me uh, evolve and, and to move on and to become a better teacher. But really important, one-on-one -on -one visits. Kerry Rood was an excellent mentor of mine. Uh, he had the class, one class before I took it. So he was able to sit down with me and give me some really good suggestions. The other thing with our colleagues is, is this USU uh, Empowering Teaching Excellence Conference is amazing. And you come here, you get really good ideas, then you can take them and implement them into your own teaching, uh, your teaching techniques and stuff like that. Right now, there's in my in my journey, I'm on the national board for the National Association of Equine Affiliated Academics. That is quite a mouthful. They like the acronym NAE for some reason, uh, but I am on the board for that. And any person in the United States that has any sort of academic um, role with with students can be on there. So it's anywhere from farrier schools, FFA. 4-H, even, and all the way up to a uni, university academics. And so that's a, a pretty neat, great opportunity. Um, those kind of national, national uh, organizations give us an idea of where we should be nationally as an institution. One thing that I, I did this summer is I, it was an online conference and we were able to, to get in and have a discussion board and they are facing some of the same struggles that I have. Our equine students aren't real anxious to do math. Our equine students are not really good at writing. And that's across the board at a national level. And so it was really helpful to be able to get in there and visit with them. Okay, so finally, let's talk about 
partnerships with USU or with, with campus resources. The main one I wanted to talk about is with City, uh, the Center for Innovation or Innovative Design and Instruction. My second year into it, um, I, I was asked to sit in and, and, and to get a mentor, mentee, uh, and, and to start engaging with City. And it was extremely helpful. They assigned Erin uh, Anderson, and I've got her picture here. And she was able to, to really mentor me and help me. I came into that with a couple of different goals. Um, my goals were I needed to learn Canvas better. I needed to get my online, um, online assessments going, and I needed to become better at teaching. And they helped me with a lot of those different things. What I, what I gained the most with it, I made it a priority for, to have regular meetings with Aaron. We scheduled them weekly. I knew that if I said, oh, let's in, here in the future, let's get together and talk about this, it would never happen. And so I, I put it on my schedule and I was religious that first year of every week going in and talking with Erin about my specific classes. I let her do what she is good at. She was really good at organizing my Canvas page, making it for me and really helping me and teaching me how to move it. She can do in 10 minutes what takes me an hour and a half to do. And so I let her do that. And I'm going to stop my PowerPoint here for a second and go here and show you my, my Canvas page. Are you guys able to see that? Great, great. Okay, so this is my equine nutrition and exercise physiology Canvas page. But Aaron has gone through and made a template. So all of my classes are essentially the same. I teach three. I teach animal anatomy and physiology. I teach it teach equine nutrition and exercise physiology, and I teach equine business management. If my students go through the first one, the anatomy and physiology, and learn that Canvas page, they can go through all of my classes. That's all the same. And it, it's helpful. And even the pattern in which she does things and what she's helped me set up. And so we're, we're here at the home page. They can click on a week and know what assignments we have, um, what we're supposed to be doing, here we go. This is where I have my recorded lectures. This classroom, I like to do a flipped classroom style. And so um, I like to have lectures that they watch online during the week. And then during our class periods, we have discussions. Um, I'm going to go here to the syllabus for just a minute and talk about that for just a second. This is updated on, a, on a, each time I, I teach the class. We have our course objectives. Now, many times these course objectives don't change, but sometimes they do. Uh, I give a course description, and then I have a class schedule. Um, I try not to change that class schedule. I try to have everything in place at the beginning of the semester. If I have to make changes, it's minor. But I want my students to be able to know from the beginning what is going to happen. After the after we've done the syllabus, I, I go through it with them every year, year at the very first lecture. The other thing I like to do is the assignments. And I've got due dates on all of my assignments at the beginning of the year. That is part of my contract with them, my partnership. I give them the due dates and then I don't change them. Their responsibility is then to turn them in on time and to make sure that they, they have it going. If there's an excuse, they need to get to me beforehand but I don't like them coming to me three days after the assignment was due and say, hey, I forgot to do that, or hey, I was out of town. Get ahead of me, get a hold of me ahead of time. Now, obviously, if it's a school excused absence, then we work around that. Yeah. But is there a question? No, okay. Um, with assignments, they're all there. My, my exams are all online. I Well, actually, over COVID, they were all online. Um, I like to make have them go into the testing center. There are quite a few testing centers that they can go to, one in Logan, but a lot of our students are, are commuting in, so I let them take it at the regional level as well. Okay, um, make sure that I'm talking about everything that I want to talk about there. Oh, one thing that, that uh, Aaron has done a wonderful job of is branding 
this page. So it's my page. It's the same way. And, and they're able to look on it and know that this is, this is one of my classes. So I am, I'm really pleased with what Aaron has done. Now, one thing that, that I, and I, and I may be wrong, but Aaron is assigned to our ADVS department. She works with all of us and there may be other ones. So I, if you have questions, contact city to see who you're supposed to work with. And it really is wonderful. Erin was able to come to my classes. She was able to sit down and help me as well with my teaching methodologies. She helped me with my syllabus. She helped me in my delivery. We would, we would set goals and then we would, we would work towards those goals and the next week we would evaluate how I had done. So it wasn't just Canvas. There were many things that she was able to help me with. Some things that we came up with and, and that we accomplished over this time frame. There was a lot better delivery in the classroom on across the board with all of my classes. We were able to rearrange my um, my lab for my uh, anatomy and physiology. We were able to challenge those students. We were able to track that the difference uh, from how it was taught before to how it is currently taught. And as we did that, we did a SOTO project, Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. We were able to document that. We were able to publish it in a paper. And it was really enlightening to myself. Um, the other thing I, I did do was the ETE certification. Uh, after a few years of doing this, the Erin sat down with me and she's like, you know, you've done all of these badges. Why don't you just fill them out and get your certification? And there were a few of them that we had to purposefully and intentionally go in and do and accomplish it really seemed to help. But that was very, very helpful. All right, as we move on other campus resources that really, really seemed to help me. The Science Writing Center, whoops. The Science Writing Center, Kendall Becker in the Science Writing Center. And I was actually able to put her in my Canvas page as a TA. So she is able to go in there and help me to design my assignments. As I mentioned earlier, our, our equine science students and some of our other uh, science or animal science students really can improve a lot in writing. So I took that from that national level and I instituted it into my classes. There's a writing assignment there, but Kendall was really able to help me um, move forward with that and, and even help me with some rubrics. I also have an assignment where they have to make an appointment and go to the Science Writing Center. Another one that really seemed to help me was uh, the library with Sandra Weingart. Again, Sandra Weingart is the librarian that's assigned to our department, and she is very specific in how she can help my students with research. She has a lot of uh, tutorials that she, they can watch, how to recognize what a journal or a peer reviewed journal is and a credible source. I don't like them just going to Wikipedia and saying, here's my source from Wikipedia. So anyway, there's a lot of different things that, that are available. Um, CAS marketing with my equine business management class, they're able to put together a presentation for them or for my students about marketing. I'm not a good marketer. Um, and, and I went to them. They were able to help me with that. They also put a tutorial together about how to create your own web page for your business. So really, really pretty amazing um, things that we're able to do there. Okay, so that's, that's all that I have on my presentation. And I just wanted to open it up now to have some questions. What, what questions do you have for me? I, I see that there's a few in the chat. Oh, Neil's been helping out. Um, and yeah, and there as well, Jim Kirk's putting in there how you can find your liaison, liaison librarian. They're there for everybody. Um, and, and I encourage you to be able to, to go in there and find them. What other questions do you have? What other comments or experiences have you guys had of partnerships that you've formed? I just have to chime in and say city is really good. I think we have an amazing group here. 
university and I, I appreciate all their help and they do a great job. So I just encourage using them as much as possible. And I think you're you're absolutely correct. They're, they're a wealth of knowledge. It's a time saver for me. Um, I have the expert or the subject expertise, but I don't have the technical knowledge to put it up. And so they are wonderful and they, they have a lot of neat ideas as well. So thank you, Thane. What else? Anybody else? Uh, you mentioned when you were talking about partnerships with students um, that you aim to challenge the students. Um, do you tend to do that in kind of a more general way, challenge everybody, or do you kind of individualize those challenges? Um, and kind of how do you go about approaching that? Well, I would like to say I do both. Um, primarily, and, and I'm going to use my ADDS 2200, my anatomy and physiology class here. This was our, our actual SOTL project um, with the lab experience. Before I came and took over in that first year I took over, students would come to the lab, spend 20 minutes, and then go home. It, and it really was not challenging them. And so we got together and we really challenged them. I mean, we, we, we increased our expectations. We increased the, the delivery. I mean, it was a much better delivery. It taxed us as well. But I taxed everybody. I challenged everybody. And they really rose to the occasion. They did very good. Now, when we do it individually, that's really in that one-on-one -on -one conversation that you can have with them. Um, if they're already at the top, then I encourage them to go further uh, and, and to, you know, that anatomy and physiology, they're preparing to be veterinarians, most of them. And I really encourage them to take it to the next level, to go above and beyond what we're, we're actually teaching them. And they respond to that. However, not all students can do that, as, as you know. A lot of them have to be able, we have to be able to uh, personalize it. So yes, I, I do both. What do you think? What do you think is more important, or not more important, how do you do it? Um, for, as for me, um, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a great question. I, um, I, I tend to think more on the, the, the course level and uh, the kinds of assignments and activities I do. I, I teach English to international students and, and definitely we get different levels of proficiency in, in, in the, our courses. And so um, trying to, to figure out um, you know, how I need to ad adjust a class or if, if I need to adjust a class based on the current you know, student group that I got is something I'm always trying to, to, to figure out. Um, uh, sometimes it's maybe just a matter of um, pacing that if, if we're getting through material faster <laughs> than I would anticipate and fewer questions, um, um, then, then I can kind of bring in additional supplementary things. Um, maybe that would, I, I could think about the, my, my supplementary things being, try, trying to, to give them a, a bigger challenge rather than just to fill time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. One thing that as we're talking about challenging those students, the way I view it, they're paying me as a, as a professor to teach them, to challenge them. If I'm not challenging them, they're wasting their tuition dollars. The other thing, if I am not preparing them for the next level, my ADVS 2200, the anatomy and physiology class, if I am not preparing them to get them into vet school and having a good foundation, I am not doing my job. Another way to look at it, if they can't get an A in this class, they're not ready for vet school. And they're not, I don't want them to have even, you know, I don't want them thinking, oh, hey, Dr. Hoops gave me a, an A, I didn't really earn it, but if that's what vet school is gonna be like, then I'm gonna be great. So I want to challenge them, I want them to be prepared. I want to do my job and give them what they're paying for. Anybody else? What other partnerships did you guys, have you guys seen or formed uh, as you've been able to, to work?
Neil, do you want to comment about City? Anything there that I've missed that you'd like to add? Sure. So this, um, you know, recently we've paired up our designers per department, per college, to make it a little bit easier to um, get to somebody. Sometimes having two people is helpful, having a backup. And yeah. So there's always a primary designer and kind of a secondary designer. So you're you can reach out to either one and we won't be like, well, I'm not your primary. They're the primary. Um, but the primary is generally tasked with um, being the one that that's just doing most of the outreach um, and uh, having first first dibs on uh, course projects and things that come through. So but yeah, that link in there, um, you can look up and see who they both are and and uh and reach out so also on on the um the website which now we have our city website but we've also just um you might have seen this all already we've rolled out teach.usu.edu which we've been making some efforts to try to consolidate as much of the the resources the people the information related to teaching all of the things that the different teams are doing and try to put those into one clearinghouse so you can just think, oh, I need to figure out how to do this. I'm going to go to teach.usu.edu and you don't have to sit there and think, is this classrooms team? Is this CTE? Is this city? Is this media productions? Just go to teach.usu.edu and hopefully you can find what you're looking for. And including there, if you go to the contact us page, there's, there's a list of a whole bunch of people and also uh, a link there to schedule an appointment with somebody from city. So. Well, thank you. And, and as you're talking about that, it brought up another point. It truly is a partnership. When I was working with Erin, um, she really felt like, and I felt like as a professor, that she was a partner in that class. And it went to the point where she could have passed any one of my exams as much as she was working with me and, and talking with me and, and helping me with the, the course material. When we did our SOTO project, she was one of the authors. And so it is a partnership and they truly do view it that way. And it's, a, it's truly amazing how, how City is able to work with us. So thank you, Neil, I appreciate that. Hey, thank you. Anybody, anyone else have any comments? We've got about three minutes before we're done. I could have kept spewing on, but I was done, so. All right, well, thank you. And I think I we can be done, Neil. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, but not before I uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation and taking the time to share with us. I, I'm happy to say that Carl is actually one of our, one of the legends over here in City. So he's done great work and we show off his course when we can. So thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate it.